that has to be one of the coolest intro I have ever had. Um, hey, hey, Stockholm, I'm so excited to be here right now. How are you feeling? Are you having fun? Yeah, meeting new people? Cool. So, who is this random girl on the stage? And as they told you before, uh, my name is Claudia. I'm a Mexican front-end developer, and I'm currently living in Paris, working for this French company called Dailymotion. But you know, today I came here to invite you to a really, really cool JavaScript party. But before that, a little bit of a disclaimer. And now I'm getting my disclaimer voice on. The following content is designed to challenge and amuse programmers not made to be suitable for practical use. You have been warned. And uh, with that being said, uh, how many of you have seen code like this before? Raise your hand. Right. I guess a lot of us are familiar with it, right? Because this is just that kind of code that people love sharing around on social media to make fun of JavaScript. Because sometimes JavaScript can be silly and it can be random, right? Um, the following is the, ja the JavaScript joke that I like the best. So it says, what's a minion's favorite JavaScript expression? Any guesses? No? You don't like minions? Come on. So this is a valid JavaScript ex expression. And if you are really wondering what it means, the outcome of this JavaScript expression actually is banana A. Banana, right? Um, so with that being said, let's talk about non-alphanumerical JavaScript, which is JavaScript without numbers or letters, just like the examples that I showed you before. So what I'm going to show you next is how to write valid JavaScript only using square brackets to access arrays, strings, and object properties, uh, parentheses to call functions and avoid errors, the curly brackets to get the string object object, and the plus operator to append strings, to add up numbers, and to cast things to numbers, and the exclamation point to cast things to Boolean. Now, I'm not crazy, this actually works, and if you don't believe me at all, you can just open up your developer tools and you can follow along, right? But before I actually start explaining this, uh, I'm gonna explain another really, really, really basic uh, concept of JavaScript, which is falsy and truthy values. So we all know that JavaScript, everything in JavaScript has a Boolean value. Everything can either be falsy or truthy. And how can we know if something is truthy or falsy in JavaScript? It's really easy, and this is my own golden rule. So here's the thing. Everything in JavaScript is truthy unless it's falsy, right? Totally makes sense, it's JavaScript. So what I actually mean is that Falsy values in JavaScript by default are false, a zero, an empty string, null, undefined, and none. And as I just told you, truthy values are everything else. It can be a string zero, a string false, an, uh, an empty array, or an empty object. Now, the thing with JavaScript is that JavaScript is an untyped language. It means that we don't have to declare the type, the type of data that a variable will hold when we're declaring it. We don't have to tell JavaScript if a, a variable is going to be of type string or of type number, type boolean, etc. Because this is the job of the interpreter, the JavaScript interpreter. Now, the problem is when we mix types in our code, we can often invoke conversions that can lead to really weird results. And these are the basics. So in this first example, we have a, we're trying to negate an empty array. So as I showed you in the previous slide, an empty array is just a truthy value. So we're negating a truth value, so we'll get false. And in the second example, it's easier, we're just negating a false, so we get a true, right? It makes sense so far. So now that we have this base of false and true, we can actually get any number by just adding the unary plus operator because the actual purpose of the unary plus operator is just to convert everything to, to a number, to cast things to a number. And um, guess what? Now that we have zero and one, we can actually create any other number by just adding one plus one plus one until infinity, right? Because we just have enough time to do that. Um, 
Following along, we can also convert things into strings. And the way this actually works is, in JavaScript, you can only, using the plus operator, you can only add numbers or concatenate strings. So what is actually going on here is, the first operand is already a, of type Boolean, it's a false, and we're trying to add an empty array. So for JavaScript, this is weird. And the thing is that JavaScript, if, if uh, the plus operator takes in anything different than a number or a string, JavaScript will automatically try to convert it to into, into a primitive type, a number or a string. So in the first case, we already have a primitive type, so that's okay for JavaScript. And in the second one, we have an empty array, so JavaScript will just convert it into a string. So in that way, we can actually cast things to string. So in the first example, we have a string false, and in the second case, we have string true. These work the exact same way with numbers. We can also convert things, uh, convert numbers to string using this technique. Now, what if we wanted to do bigger numbers? Because of course, we're just not going to add one plus one until infinity. We have more things to do. So what we can actually do is, for larger numbers, such as 123, we can um, convert into string every single digit of the number. Then we can concatenate all of those strings together and cast the whole thing back to number using the plus operator. So 123 will actually look like this in non-alphanumerical JavaScript. So moving along. Uh, the first, if we try to access an, a non-existent element in an array, we will get undefined. If we try converting an empty object into a number, we will get nan. And if we try converting an object into a string, we will get the string object object. Now, why is this even important? Now that we got all of these words and vocabulary, and by words and vocabulary, I mean true, false, object, etc. Uh, what we can actually do is we can convert those words to string, like I sh just show you, and what we can do is we can access every single character in those words, and if you're following along into this slide, you can actually realize that we can create words that actually mean something to JavaScript, such as filter, which is a function. Now, um, Martin Kleppe, the creator of this website called JSFuck, will actually call this technique using ja uh, saying JavaScript Scrabble. Because basically what we're doing is we're just trying to create words that actually mean something to JavaScript out of the, cert out of the set of characters that we just found using this technique. So it's JavaScript Scrabble, right? Um, so to keep things short, because this is a short talk, uh, basically, we have access to functions such as call, concat, constructor, join, slice, sort, and filter using the technique that I just showed you. But how does this actually look in action? Because as so far, I have just shown you expressions, right? How to show true, false in the console. But how can we actually make it do something in our browsers? So this uh, small piece of code will just do an other one in your browser. And here it how it's, here's how it works. This first part is this uh, square brackets is just an empty array, right? Like nothing we're going on. Now, the filter segment is just trying to access the filter property of that empty array, which is just a normal function. Now, the constructor part is just trying to get the constructors of functions. And the constructor of functions can take as a parameter a script that will return back a new function with that script as its body. And as you might be guessing by now, um, the last parentheses are just automatically executing that new function. And therefore, this piece of code will actually just do an other one in your browser. And the code behind it is the actual code to make it work. So yeah, JavaScript, right? We love it and hate it. Um, I know, I know this is a lot to take in and it's like so weird, it's just one of the perks of JavaScript, but if you're really curious about this non-alphanumerical nonsense, there is a lot of online converters that you can check out, and I really, really recommend you to check the source code, because it's really interesting to understand how it actually works behind it. 
And as I told you, this is one of the most well-known and popular sites uh, in, in online converters, JSFOG. Um, but you know, there is no limits with this. Once, when I was doing uh, some research for this talk, I came across this uh, repository called jQuery Screwed. And basically, the guy, he just rewrote the whole jQuery library using none of a numerical JavaScript. Because, you know, some people have more time than me. This is the source code. So good luck reading that. Um, and, you know, at this point, you're probably thinking, like, Claudia, why on earth would you ever care about this? Why, would, why should we care? Like, nobody's going to be writing JavaScript this way soon. You know, this is not something you're going to be paid for. Um, and you're totally right. Like, there is no way on earth I will be writing JavaScript this way. But, I mean, I think one of the main reasons that we should know about it and the thing that JavaScript is capable of doing is just to know the power of the language, the power of JavaScript, and the amazing things it can actually do. And if this is not a good enough reason, um, this is a tweet from Martin Kleipe from a few months ago in which he was pointed out to a, to a security post. And basically what he uh, was showing is a security post from a post from an engineer that realized a vulnerability on eBay. And basically what he realized is that it was possible to inject malicious JavaScript code into the eBay website because apparently eBay was uh, not aware of JavaScript injected in a different way. So the thing is that eBay will uh, screen tags like HTML tags like script or iframe, but it was totally unaware of, code, of JavaScript code injected in a different way, such as non alphanumerical thingy. Um, yeah, JavaScript, it's crazy sometimes. Was it all of this a dream? Uh, it's not. <laughs> this actually works, and you can try to test it out. But as I told you, why should we care about all of this nonsense? So first of all, knowledge is power. We have to know where we're writing the code we're writing and how it works. We have to write code that other people can understand and that can also learn from. We have to push the limits of the language. It's up to us. The future of JavaScript is in our hands. It's up to us to push the limits, to try to create new patterns, and ultimately just benefit the community and all of us together. We have to continue breaking rules and having fun. And playing is learning. For me, it's this quirkiness side of JavaScript that just makes me want to try it out, to test, to make mistakes with it. And ultimately, this is what will make all of us better developers every day. And as I keep repeating throughout this, uh, this talk, it's all about the power of the language. And this is a quote that I really, really like that says, JavaScript is a language that survived not because of its flaws, not despite its flaws, but because of them. And last but not least, this is a quote from a book that I really like and I really recommend you. It's called If Hemingway Wrote JavaScript by Angus Kroll. And it says, the best JavaScript developers are those who obsess about language, who explore and play with it every day, and in doing so, they develop their own idioms and their own voice. Angus Kroll. So, taksamiket. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Thank you very much.